Do you think those will be taken away? They already said absolutely. I think it's so sad to think that my grandchildren will not know what a snow day is. It's not the same. I was definitely afraid. In fact, I considered retiring if I physically had to go back into the school building because it's such a risk. I don't want them out there alone. That's the thing too. I get really nervous. Like, don't go anywhere alone and don't be on top of each other. We just want to be back, be able to socialize with other people. It's just nice to be around people and be able to have face-to-face -face interactions. It's tough. Just day to day, I find myself doing a lot more work that has definitely decreased my motivation. And I think that right off the bat has been the most noticeable. It's just taking up more time to do tasks that would normally not be as time consuming at school. I think work that would typically take me only like an hour is now taking at least double that. Everything is definitely kind of just compounding and becoming more and more. It just doesn't feel sincere having a professor teach through a screen. I feel like it's very difficult for them to judge when the class as a whole is really struggling. I don't know if that's because a lot of the time, I feel like a lot of the kids are also just not paying attention. You know, it's tough. I just, I miss that social interaction, just being around students who are studious and wanna do well in their classes and who spend several hours a day studying. It definitely helped bolster my motivation and push me to be a better student, you know? I just don't have that anymore. It's nice to be able to like work together. And if someone's having an issue, we can sit down and really work through the problem because I think that's also really important as well. It's very disheartening, a bombardment of issues. I was an online student, so my second master's, I got, well, entirely online. So I know like from my experience, I know what it was like to be on both ends of being an online student. The only difference is online learning was my choice. I made that decision because it was the best thing for me. But for the students at Lehigh, it's not a choice. I mean, they're being forced to do this out of necessity. That makes a big difference, right? When you're told you have to do something and you don't have the options there to do it. There are these huge gaps in educational equity. So you have students who have easy access to things and then students who don't. Another thing that's become a huge challenge. I think a lot about like what's fair and what's right and what's equitable. And teaching online has really like disrupted that because there are certain like inequalities that I just don't have any control over and that exacerbates pre-existing inequalities. They deserve the same quality. I'm fortunate enough to be in a location where I have a steady stream of high-speed internet where I have access to a computer, books, and resources at my disposal. I've had to be really accommodating. I know my colleagues are being accommodating. And yeah, not everyone has their own room with a desk and a computer that they can go in and work in. You may have a family that needs to sit three or four people in a kitchen or around a table to work, right? So yeah, I definitely have to be very accommodating and sensitive to that. I think the biggest challenge is that every time we think we've got something going well, something goes wrong. That's not what higher education is about. If you're able to be here, you should be able to get the very best education that a school like Lehigh can offer. And I just don't really see that coming to fruition this past semester. They're not getting as much, they're not getting as much attention as they need. They're not getting hands to do hands-on experiments. There's so many unknowns and I'm just really trying. I don't know that I'm succeeding all the time. It's more difficult when you are not face-to-face -face or interacting physically with other classmates, right? Trying to get those peer connections and developing that kind of uh, support group, making an actual connection. Even just being able to look across campus and see them at some of the outside events on campus and things like that. So I think what I miss is that like community feeling, you know, just some level of normalcy. Social life is just almost non-existent. <laughs> I feel so bad for college kids. I really do. This is like the best time of your life and you're missing one whole year of the best. The whole college experience is to be social and hang out and do things with each other. People are like craving that connection. 
with new lockdown procedures in my state, it's even more difficult to kind of get out of the house and I guess just blow off some steam. It's just very locked into school and that's really it. I really hope that the kids don't have to be on their screens like they are now. What I think everybody needs right now is just a little sense of control. There needs to be some structure. Technology offers control. Technology is where you all excel. Just play with it and have fun with it. View it as an opportunity to be creative. A lot of my professors struggled. I know in the beginning, my class lectures were kind of pushed off for a couple of weeks while they were getting comfortable using this new technology and getting used to recording and setting up these meetings and just completely flipping their curriculum on its head pretty much. It's definitely gotten better, you know, with the summer allowing, you know, professors to prepare. It's still not quite up to the caliber it probably should be for the amount of work and to the extent of what we're doing. So I'm having a little bit more hope that some of the kinks are going to be worked out come spring 21. But again, I know it's tough. It's funny because the big thing we used to always tell the kids as teachers and parents, you know, is don't be on your screens, you know, turn screens off at night. Don't be on your screens all day because it's not good for you. Now that's all we're doing. I can already tell that it's going to lead to burnout with my work and just even decrease my motivation even more. There's got to be a silver lining in this somewhere. I mean, there's so many bad things, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully we will appreciate it so much more when life gets, like, more back to the way it was. Well, and I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of, like, just, like, activity, excitement, and celebration. This is kind of a gift, and I think in a year or two from now, we may look back and there will be things that we miss. I thought I was kind of living the dream this summer. I love being home with, you know, my kids were home from school. They're still home, obviously, but um, I don't know. Last summer, if somebody had said to me, would you want to be home all summer and have six months with your kids? I would have grabbed at it. Novelty wears off. But now, moving forward, when you finally do get back, you're going to have an appreciation for it that you might not have had, a, had much of it at the time. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. In some ways, there's like a more unique and more shared experience happening now. But it was like going to shape the rest of all your lives, but especially the freshmen's lives. They're going to talk about this forever, that they started college online during a pandemic. So like a sort of, a sort of shared bonding college experience. 10 years from now, I said to someone, I was like, you know what? You will not forget this. I feel very fortunate. I'm very happy with the opportunities I made out of it. And you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of silver lining involved. And you know, we're experiencing potentially the future of our education system. And I think that kind of stands for something. And it's kind of exciting to be at the forefront of it. And you know, I'm still eager to see kind of what happens in the future.